Welcome to the U.S. Open 10 Ball Championship, proudly presented by Q Sports International and hosted here in Las Vegas at Griff's Billiards. Let's meet our two opponents for our next match. First, hailing from the United States of America, Robert Ferry. And his opponent, hailing from England, Darren Appleton. Gentlemen, have a great match. You may lag for break. Wow. Welcome, everyone, to the 2019 U.S. Open 10 Ball Championships here at Griff's in Las Vegas, Nevada. This is a second round, one loss side match between Darren Appleton and Robert Ferry. This is George Taha in the booth, joined by Jeremy Jones. Jeremy, what's going on with these guys today? Well, Darren, uh, a name that rings highly in the world of pool, a Hall of Famer, uh, many titles, all, all the big ones you can think of. Um, a little bit on a, a comeback here after taking a year plus off uh, from really any competitive pool. Played a little bit of English eight ball uh, while he was back home uh, in Great Britain. And then Mr. Ferry, I, I don't know a ton about a, a man that is it Connecticut. He's actually from Fairless Hills, Pennsylvania. Oh, Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah. He uh, works full time. He uh, owns a tree removal landscaping business. Oh, hard work. And uh, 39 year old uh, Fargo, as you can see on the bottom of the screen there, you're. Fargo rates are up there for both players. Um, he's got his hands full with Darren Appleton. Yeah, a considerable favorite. Um, even if you took the Fargo away, you would consider it not knowing, but a 200-plus point favorite as far as the uh, Fargo uh, mm -hmm. rating, which is how we, we've made our seeds. Right. We had uh, 16 players were seeded. Uh, as per their Fargo rating, Darren, I believe, was seeded 11th. So he has the 11th highest Fargo of the 16. Uh, we had 23 of 36 players seated, I mean, that have a Fargo rate uh, higher than 800. Yeah, and a nice opener there. I think he got him on the four to where this is just going to be a really tough hit. Maybe some type of trick shot almost uh, to try and get at this one. Probably the best play, maybe brush the four over to where it's not playable underneath the five, something like that. You could put the seven on the three. If he does one of those, this may be one of those three foul situations we, we mm -hmm. talked about earlier that doesn't come up very often. But if he just kicks at it without tying too much other, uh, I, don't, I don't see him really hitting it myself, kicking at it. Not without a, a, a serious bend of the cue ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't look like he can get any part of it. He has to mass it just past the two ball to kind of catch it. Unless he came to the bottom rail. Came with to the, the bottom rail with the mass a, Maybe and he just have to barely avoid the corner but, pocket. But he's got to hit it kind of slow to yeah. get that much on it to get. Yep. So he could mass a that way, but he's got to hit downward with a ton of left English and really hit it with a lot of speed to make it bend. Uh, like I said, I think I like put him putting the seven on the three or the just brush the four over on top of the five. Mm -hmm. That'd probably be the highest percentage shot for him. And well, probably a big match. You know, these are big matches, I think, as far as we're talking about Darren Appleton trying to make a comeback. Um, not just being a big favorite, you might, but it, I think big matches as far as him trying to get time at the table. And I know he's a oh. favorite, but it's a competitive, it's a competitive match nonetheless, and a, one that he can carry on in the future matches. Mm -hmm. Well, he's done something here that uh, he's going to regret. He's left him an open shot on the one and put the two ball uh, available for the 210 combo. Yeah. Well, 210 isn't. He's got to float this ball past to get really nice on it. Okay. And now he's floated into the oh, corner. Oh, wow. Well, that's kind of why I don't think he really should have played for the combo. Mm -hmm. I think he could have could have ran out. Um Huge, huge error there. Yeah, and it's that's what I mean. It wasn't a there wasn't a great line to get mm -hmm, the cue ball get to position yeah. where it was a nice, comfortable way to do it. Well, Robert seems pretty comfortable with this and takes the first game and breaks uh, breaks Darren's break. Yeah, takes one away from him and gets that all important first.
first game out of his system and onto the scoreboard. This is a race to nine double elimination tournament. The finals is an extended race to 11. We are playing by CSI rules, meaning that the two and the three will be racked on the corners. Ten ball does not count on the break. Uh, nor, uh, and it can be made in a combo as you just witnessed uh, for a win. These guys, uh, Darren was de just just defeated two hours ago by Tyler Steyer, nine to one, actually in the last two hour segment. <coughs> and Robert lost his first match to Michael Yednick at 10 a.m. in the morning, uh, nine to four. Then he had a bye and finds himself in the heat of the battle with Darren Appleton. Yeah, we, all, we have one match going on still from the 2 o'clock round, that being Brandon Schuff with a 7-6 lead over Jeffrey DeLuna. Mm. Uh, we've got some other 4 o'clock loser side matches uh, that have started, and we'll keep you updated with those as soon as those get into it a little bit. Meanwhile, Robert breaks the balls. Looks like he's lost the cue ball. And Darren at the table springs out of his chair, says, OK, I just made a mistake. I have to make things right. And he's faced with what appears like a more difficult out than it did the last time when he when he tried to attack a combination with the 210. But this is... This he, is... He'd probably like to get nice and full on the 2 to where he can just stop right there and then just shoot that little gap between the 6-9 and the 5-7. And the then he'll just wrap the cue ball around the 10, three rails coming towards the 4. So just kind of get the run started in a simple manner. And he's in perfect position to do it. Work the cue ball towards the three. And this is where he's really got to trust the speed of the table. It's pretty fast. We saw a scratch with ball in hands in the last game. So. Yeah, he learned a lot about the speed there. Yeah, and he's, he's ended up here where he's got to go back and forth. So this is a tester here in game two. But probably one that... He'll comes, pass. Comes with the reward yeah. of winning the game if he can knock it down. Yeah, nice stroke there. Very confident. And Darren is, you know, was known for his eight ball skills and the way he played the game. And I've hardly seen any better at it than him. Um, but. He's just really good with the cue ball and his mental process as a whole, playing nine ball, any rotation games, eight ball. It's just a manner of when he gets to really comfortable making the balls, not saying he struggles, like he's, he's not bad at it. But once that sets in, he's a very tough customer because he doesn't dog it. He's not one to really let pressure get to him too much. Don't hit that nine ball. Yeah, this may fall straight too, which may pose a problem. No, yeah, he got off. enough. Just enough. And when you're close to it here, he can come to the backside. He can go forward. He can, it's either one. Lines it out pretty well. Probably swing over for it. No, just kind of hold there. And he gets back on, back on track and takes game number two to be tied at one. So Darren's found his uh, loser here uh, goes out in the very first day of the U.S. Open. <coughs> we have three days of U.S. Open 10 ball and followed by three days of U.S. Open 8 ball. Yeah, well, no one likes to get eliminated on the first day, but I think the guys appreciate the schedule, uh, get, getting on with it, um, mm -hmm. playing a lot of pool in six days, but, you know, it's not stretched out too, too much. Uh, the guys were here not long ago. Some of them didn't yeah, even ten leave. Ten days ago. <laughs> ten days ago they were here for the So it's been a stretch out ball. here in Las Vegas. And the Diamond Las Vegas Open nine ball. And, um, and one of the things about playing both of these tournaments is uh, there is a reward for the all-around finisher. Uh, $3,500 goes to the first place finisher along with an entry into the $100,000 
added Predator World 10 Ball Championship to be played at the end of March of this coming year, 2020. And the second place uh, all-around finisher gets $1,500 in addition to whatever Mondays they win out of both tournaments. So, decent payday. The 8-ball and 10-ball are both $10,000 added. Yeah, well, Darren, it's a matter if he can reach this on the one. If he can reach it comfortably, I could see him cutting it in. Otherwise, he may bank it around, or, or he's chipping the ball. He's chipping. Going down. He's going to leave a enough. shot. Is it? Right behind the deuce. Yes, yeah. it is. Sure. This would be a, a thought of a jump cue here for sure. Solid hit here means a lot. Just any time there's eight or nine balls on the table, uh, there's just a lot of good things that can happen if you if you make a good hit here, especially if you got a little speed on it. That way you may get a little separation of some sort. You could try to make it, let the cue ball come back around table. We are sponsored by Q Sports International Cyclop Balls, actually using the Hyperion Balls. Discount custom apparel. We are being played at Griff's Billiards in Las Vegas, Nevada. Also sponsored by JB Cases, Kamui, Predator, and Simonis Cloth. The young man you're watching shoot, Robert Ferry, is sponsored by Kamui, Chekyo, and Viking. Okay, this ball's going to creep gonna, on the six. He's going to get a favorable roll there and a, find cover. A really nice one because yeah. this is not an easy kick. You just got to kick by the two and go one rail at the one, I believe. And there's just you can see they're kind of both going together. You can scratch off the one in the mm -hmm. side, uh, and you got to call it. Going by the five is how you'd like to go, kicking the one towards that, those other balls, and there's no real scratch, but. It's a little tighter with the five being there. You may have to spin into it, huh, George? Yes, yeah. He's gonna. It's not a natural angle. It looks like going by the two is a natural angle, but you catch that one ball flush, and you're going in the side pocket like you mentioned. And he made a nice hit there. And yeah. uh, but he's didn't get any reward. He's left them almost straight into the corner for the one. And you can see the two there and the four near. Um, mm -hmm. He's gonna have a little work going from the four to the five and. The six isn't too bad, so big shot here on the one. Probably just draw to the rail and out. And just, whoa, he missed the one entirely. And he overcut Another it. The cover again behind the nine. Yes, sir. Roll number two. So Darren should kick long rail here, uh, trying to make the one by the four. Uh, off the four or something like that. And yeah, big pocket. Yeah, and a lot of times when you kick it, you'll cut it a little bit. The cue ball will fall towards the ten, and maybe the one will get in a tough area. Uh, so always, even though the, the short rail is a little easier, meaning coming to the bottom rail here, mm -hmm. it's an easier kick. It's, it's not quite as much uh, fortune. Well, and the other thing and about it, make is, it yeah, you can make it because that big pocket with the four ball there. The other thing is when you kick it from the bottom rail, you're kicking it into the open. Right. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, so things like this happen, though, like a little more speed, I, I think, maybe next time. But it might be okay. I'm not sure that goes by the five in the side. Well, it's not easy, and it looks a little straighter on your monitor than it really is. There's mm -hmm. more cut there, so he's going away from the two uh, a little more than you think. And it's not easy to get back over. You have to put some speed on it to get back over. Yeah, and uh, he was addressing it with some inside English, and maybe kind one more time he's, he's left not much. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe not much, but he does have a safety available. Just bank it to the middle of the, of the table up on top and the cue ball behind the deuce. Or just come over on the nine like he just did. Yeah, well, those types of safeties, Darren, and a lot of the guys that have a little of that English eight ball snooker background, mm -hmm. that's one rail over behind one ball. Very simple, simple, and very effective. Yeah, but it's, they make it look easier than it really is. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a nervy shot. you got to have really good speed. You can see the one was really open. Uh, yeah, so. You're coming across the line of where you want to lend the cue ball, mm -hmm. so it, uh, speed has to be perfect. Um, and you're not moving it far, so I have a tendency of not stroking the ball full. 
yeah, you get worried about it, and it usually affects your execution a little bit. And they hit that perfectly, by the way. That's exactly how you want to kick at that ball, coming across it. Good thing about that is when you learn to come across the top of them balls like that, you can hit them with a lot of speed to let the ball come back up, the object ball. But cue ball will normally kill. It has that natural English coming off of it to where you'll notice it held towards that end rail, mm -hmm. that top rail. It's coming across this. This could end up in the drink on the bottom right past the 10. Well, he's called Always it made the there. ball. Yeah. Interesting to see if he shoots at this one, though, because cue ball, can he hold it? Can he hold it and get the two up for a shot? Because the six, excuse me, the seven and the nine are big balls here. The combo. Yeah, and that's he what got I, behind the nine. Yeah, it just yeah. looked like to me it was, a, it was tough to tough. navigate both. You'll notice mm -hmm. the two still on the bottom rail, too. And tough. Uh, he's going to have to really maneuver the cue ball some way. Uh, that's why he's looking at a two railer here. Now I would look at the three railer maybe. Can I lengthen the three railer? Uh, right around before the eight. the eight. Right, right around the eight. Oh, he's going to jump, kick this ball. Can he reach the jump? Yeah. Yeah. No, he's jumping over the five and kicking oh, it. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> to reach the five, jump it over the. Nine is tough to do to get way out there and stretch yourself out. Well, if he hits it, he's a big, I think, a little bit of a favor to make it. Just the way it sits, it's perfectly off the rail, probably a centimeter or so. And like you said, yeah. kicked it and made it. And now it's all opened up. And we saw the jump and the kick there in a combination. I don't know if I mentioned it, but this is alternate break. Rack your own. A little bit different rules than the yeah. we played just weeks ago where you can play an early combination on the 10. CSI rules. Right. The combination works. Two and three on the corners. 10 ball does not count on the break. Yeah. All ball fouls. That remain the same. Darren, this is where he'll probably use his, his talent a little bit because he can chop the 10 from where the 9's at. He'll realize that. Just go ahead and use your skill here just to float out for the 9 on the side. All right, he went ahead and played it firm, so that tells me he's going to go ahead and move it up and down. You go straight up and down, or do you put a little draw on it and come two rails down? I think straight, I okay. think. A little hairy on the 10, but again, he could have cut the 10 from where the 9 was at, and it's not much different than where he's at here. And wins two in a row for a one-game lead. Robert to break. We get to see his break a second time. Yeah, just mishit the first one a little bit. Got a little t on top mm -hmm. of the ball and cut the one and scratched. We'll have one more match coming to you tonight at 6 p.m. Our stream schedule for the next five days will be uh, 12, 2, 4, and 6. Easy to plan, middle of the day. <coughs> Get your popcorn, get your beer, get your soda pop. Your meal's all planned out. Join us here. Thanks for joining us, by the way. There we have, uh, again, one previous match from 2 o'clock. Now tied at 7 apiece between Brandon Schuff and Jeffrey DeLuna. Daboul. Jeffrey Daboul DeLuna. Okay, a little better hit there. A little more of what we're used to seeing. Didn't make one just because he, again, broke from the right, come across the left of it just a little bit, but the t timing and everything was much better. So look for Robert to get some results during this match on the break. Wow, James Barax uh, leads Frank Oliver is 5-0. Yeah, James. Already uh, it just started. 
You may not know Jamie. I don't know no, Jamie, he's a no. Great player. Okay. From, he's originally from like uh, Moline, Illinois area, uh, Quad Cities, something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, now lives in the South. I believe he's still in Alabama. Um, works full time, so doesn't play quite as much as he used to. But. Kind of like the gentleman we're watching play here against uh, Darren Appleton. Now we'll see how Darren's feeling here as far as if he's just going to kill this with a lot of right English. Kind of shoddy. I mean, didn't really. He was really inept at all the shots, but the type of shot he was very good at under pressure. And that's the kind of shot I was talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. I forget who we were doing. And. They elected to move the cue ball more with draw rather than float it in with that outside like that. And if this type of table, especially, George, if you get very comfortable with that type of shot, it really makes a lot of situations easy. Well, your cue ball does traveling, and it's, it's very predictable. And, and actually, yeah. you're throwing the ball into the hole, so it helps make the ball, too. Yeah, and it But you have a tendency of punching it. Yeah, well, if you get a little quick with it, yeah, now that's yeah. whenever you have a problem. That's it's where your just kind of depends in. on what type of... Uh, swinger of the queue you are you know that's why mm -hmm. certain players and some great ones at that uh, stay away from that type of shot just because their fundamental doesn't set up for it mm -hmm. so well but it's almost like a must to me uh, it's almost like something you need to develop in my mind uh, I, I agree I, I, told, I uh, couldn't agree more like a Ralph really. Suquet is a, a, he, it's really won him a ton of tournaments just that Beside, little outside yeah shot. just that yeah. type of shot yep. being able to hit the ball heavier and trust the throw to slow the cue ball down, mm -hmm. even though you're not really swinging it that that soft, or short rather. Okay, he's kind of a little funny here. Is he going to draw into the bottom of the ten just kind of mildly? He could do that. I like coming around and ending up about where the cue ball, a little to the right of the cue ball, just with a little bit of right low. Miss the ten, go yeah. two rails and play the nine ball in the opposite corner. That way you can put a little bit of stroke on the ball. Yeah. I think he clears the 10. It looks like he does. I think like if he, he puts the right with that speed, though, he may deflect may, into the 10. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. That's, that's what I, the difference is seeing the angle out there and seeing it on the screen. That right. you know, all the difference in the world. He's going to draw right into the 10. I didn't mind that. I mean, there wasn't. I understand you didn't come away with the cleanest shot, but I think he wanted to hit more of the bottom of the 10. He just got a little more out of the draw than, than expected. and. He wasn't ever going to be in a horrible position. Uh, yeah, I didn't think he'd pass that up. Yeah. And game number three in a row for Darren Appleton. Off to a 3-1 lead after uh, making that big mistake on the first game. What was it? He, yeah, he scratched he the scratched ball in hand trying to get hand. on the combination. Mm -hmm, that's right. That's what it was. That 210 combo, he scratched uh, in the one point, he shot the one. Twenty-three players in this 36-man field have Fargo ratings of in excess of 800. And I think I mentioned uh, Daryl is was the 11th rated player, seeded player, with a Fargo of, as you can see on your screen, 788. Now DeLuna with an 8-7 lead and on the hill against Shuff. That's still winner side. And breaking. Yeah, and breaking. DeLuna's is such a powerful player. Oh, yeah. He's one of the few, or I shouldn't say few, but one of not many anyways that can really dial up the speed when he needs it and really mm -hmm. doesn't break down at all. Like the, That's why he has so much power is because the form stays even though... He really can amp it up at times. Really special talent. Well, Robert's got a clean clean uh, view of this here. I think everything is pretty much out in the open. It's a matter of uh, putting the cue ball where you need to have it and working your way through the table. The three ball seems to go by the 10, so it shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, we'll have Except to shoot. Except the four is something else. Just yeah. coming over, really. He's going to have to shoot it from a little distance, too, it looks like. Yeah. So now just adding that extra two, three feet, it's going to be hit a little better. Mm -hmm. A little more pure. Yeah, well he's got, in order to get the cue ball all the way over for the four, he's going to have to hit a little pace on it, which uh, shrinks the pocket that he's going into. Yeah, I might have taken a chance there, drawing one rail out in between the five nine, getting closer to this ball. Mm -hmm. Just for that reason. 
Oh, he went for oh, the tent. Oh, and the uh, major error. Yeah, trying to get the early win there. And <laughs> I'm not so sure it was, you know, that low line. percentage of making it. Just uh, with that speed, it was kind of hard to make it. It was You're asking a lot. I think it had to be a lot lighter, mm -hmm. giving it a better chance. But. Well, that tells me he felt more confident executing that shot than the running out. So, so maybe the uh, three just had a portion of the pocket. Could be. He just wasn't comfortable uh, playing it off the rail into the pocket. Sliding it off the rail into the pocket. And, of course, the angle he sees is a lot different than the one we see on the screen. Okay, well, <clears throat> excuse me. You can see a seven ball that's got a little bit of not a whole lot of room to work with. I think, so. he's, I think he's going to make room. No. Oh, really? I think he's going to play the five off the nine and move him. Okay. Well, that's Okay. Make sure you get on the good side of the six because the seven may go downward. Mm -hmm. That was important. And probably very aware of being Darren Appleton. Well, we didn't get to see his, his loss against Tyler Steyer, and it was a bit one-sided from the, from the final score. Uh, but looks pretty comfortable here. I mean, mm -hmm. Overall, cue ball's been pretty tidy and... Of course, Tyler, he's, we're playing an alternate break format, but his break, even alternate break, can be so devastating sometimes. Mm. Um, yeah, we saw a that. a lot of pressure the, when it's your that. turn to break. Yeah. Well, just the pressure is trying to keep up with his, his break. That's what I mean. Yeah, There's exactly, a lot of pressure yeah. on when you watch what he does, and you're like, well. I got to. <laughs> try to do the same thing here. He's, he's having a lot of success. Yeah, he's probably going to win 90% uh, of the games on his break. That's what you feel like anyways, even though that math is probably off a little bit. No, we, we watched him break enough. <laughs> I think it was both uh, the Diamond Las Vegas uh, nine ball and the uh, uh, Predator World ten ball. Yeah, DeLuna on the nine and ten now to advance. And, oh, yeah. Okay, got a little bit out of line on the 10 on the side. One he should make, but it's got uh, a little bit of a cut on it. Well, yeah, at this juncture, it doesn't have to go, right? Yeah, that right. little, that, that corner of the side pocket uh, picks up a lot of, uh, has a lot of friction. Yeah, things become blurry sometimes mm -hmm. at 8 7. Well, we get to watch it right down the, right down the pipe here. He's yeah, made it. Yeah. And DeLuna goes on. On the one on the winter side, and Brandon Schuff gets uh, taken over to the one loss side. Well, Ferry broke the balls a lot better that time. An unfortunate kiss on the cue ball back in the corner, and another premium way to start uh, the run out with ball in hand for Darren Appleton. Hmm. I guess it's just a matter of choice. Uh, I was going to say, I like going. Following uh, in the side, following, right? Following uh, that, either that or taking the cue ball down by the four, going two rails with uh, uh, for the two underneath the nine. Go between the nine and the rail. You got a lot Come of speed, speed control there. Mm -hmm. I, I like this following to the left side. It's so clear, and you want a little angle to mm -hmm. get back up on the three. So cutting it from the middle diamond is, is pretty pretty premium, pretty nice. Well, Darren is a very experienced player, knowledgeable, and he chose the, the path that works the best for him there and probably worked the best for everyone, as you just noted. Yeah, and he probably is asking himself why didn't he see that initially, and that could be a little bit of that rust uh, still uh, making its way. Mm -hmm. Being deoxidized. Yeah. This is where I don't mind coming to the other side. Uh, you would think just automatically, if you're looking at your mm -hmm. screen here, you'd play the four in the upper upper left, top left of your screen. But if you don't fall correctly there, and if you got to be confident doing it, you can fall to where you're funny on the getting from the four to the five. And actually, has he fallen there, or can he just follow this? Okay, well, hair more angle, he's funny because he can't draw into the eight, and he can't go forward yeah. without the six. Uh, he had to just, oh, he's going to come up too close. Yeah. Yep. And that's why I may have not 
because you can handle any angle when you shoot the three and come across for the mm -hmm. other uh, straight in. You can draw mm -hmm. back for the five in the lower left. If you fall a little off of it, either way, you can move the cue ball. Um, that was oh, wow. Okay, I he's thought he not going to get away with this one though. I thought he did too when he came mm -hmm. off the rail, but he just kind of hugged the rail and slid, I guess, a little bit and went right in. But his cue ball nestled up to the nine. And uh, well, Jeffrey DeLuna went on to win that match at nine to seven. It was, but Brandon Shaw played a solid match, so he'll be back. Both of them will be back. One on the Brandon on the loser side. One loss side, excuse me. That's okay. I, I just, I, I say that and then I kick myself in the rear for saying it because I just don't like to call anybody on the loser side. No, I, I It's got one you. loss side. I just, I personal, uh, trying to be positive with everything. Doesn't necessarily mean it's the right way. Okay, this is going to dress up pretty nice uh, for Ferry to get back on the board and cut it to 4-2. He needs that because he doesn't want to go down 5-1. Big difference in 4-2. Now this looks pretty nice, especially if he can kind of just come off the rail just about where the eight ball is now. Okay. Well, looks like the nerves are raging. Yeah, a little bit of that mm -hmm. for sure. Probably and his defense hasn't played many tables as slick as this one mm -hmm. uh, right now, uh, especially un under a big competitive situation, uh, competition. So a shot like that, you can uh, not realize how easy the ball's cut uh, on the new field with the heated lights and the cameras and everything. Cameras don't really affect it, but may affect the player a little bit, though. You know, we talk about uh, the stream table, how it usually almost always rolls faster than the rest of the tables in the room, no matter where you're at, because it's got, uh, what do you got, 10 lights up there? Mm -hmm. uh, 10 or 12 lights, actually. Uh, quite a few. Three, four. Anyway, uh, but the lights are, aren't they, are, the, are those LED or are they fluorescent? Uh, I'm not sure. It looks like they're fluorescent, so... I guess the fluorescent light does add a little bit of heat. Not 100% sure. Uh, but now with the newer lights, you know, it shouldn't make a difference, but it still does. So is it the space around the table that's different, the humidity? Uh, in this particular location, uh, the stream table is the closest one to the door. So with the door opening and closing, and especially this time of year in Las Vegas, with the humidity up to the the summer storms and the humidity in the air, it could make a difference. Oh, yeah. But it's still playing dry, playing real slick instead of wet. Well, a dry break there. The, I don't think he's left him anything offensive. The two's got him just barely covered up. Maybe a cross-corner bank. And it's not a horrible one to shoot at. Cue ball should go by the two and back up towards the three. I think the pocket's open, and I think, I, uh, think so. I think it's a hard one to hang. Uh, so really, it's either going to get back across into the four maybe if you hit the bank a little high. Okay. Get a little heavy and may get fortunate with the one. Almost. Hit. Not quite. I think Darren's just got to slow spin this in. Does he want to come between the 9 and the 10? Right through there. <laughs> That's tight, but the angle's there for it. Is it? That's yeah, it, it, see, see it from here now? Yeah, I can now, see it. And now the angle's there for it. And if he kiss, if he bumps the 9, That's not horrible, still, huh? no, it yeah, still goes towards still, the deuce. Yeah, I like it. You're right. And even if he hits the 9 full, yep. he should be okay. Yeah, he hit the 10 still have a shot on the deuce. And really, the two rails out of the corner, another shot that... With the snooker background a little bit in the English eight ball, oh, wow! But he That's wants to similar find to the one that uh, <laughs> oh, we saw that, that scratched. scratched yeah, on. exactly. So they're playing a little tight, two rails out of the corner, especially for New Felt. A little surprisingly tight. Mm -hmm. Well, 
know he's going to hold. Yeah, I would take a chance at coming two rails and bumping the five myself, getting thin on the I three. I like that coming to, off, yeah. yeah. Yep. And maybe not. I mean, you can get to that area right there drawn, but I may take a chance here at coming two rails and getting inside the four or five with the cue ball. But getting to that area, if he doesn't get just right on the four, he might have a hard time holding it for the five. Right, and kind of trap yeah, himself. Yeah, kind of. Kind of force himself to do something more than he wants to well, do. He got a lot of angles, so he's going to be off the rail, and so he's yeah, this is a little better because at least if you get a little thin, you feel like you can manufacture something if you're off the rail with the cue ball. So he won't be coming up the side rail here. He'll be a good six or eight inches off and be able to kill it maybe or do whatever he needs. Now he might just hit it perfect. That's pretty well, sweet. That's about where you'd put it if he had ball in hand. That's what he was looking at to begin with. There's that little kill shot you talked about right. with the right side, right. the right hand English. Exactly. Yeah, and the, that one there is one that most everyone will shoot, but mm -hmm. not only that, it's kind of necessary there, but it's the longer distance ones that yeah. where if you become real comfortable at them, they're the ones that can really save you on this well, type of table. They're deadly because the longer distance ones, they usually believe that you can't hit the ball hard enough to get it there. And right. You're afraid to really soft roll it, but it gets there just fine with the outside English. Oh, absolutely. It kicks it so. towards the hole. So he should just stun between the 9 10 here. Mm, I like it. Another shot that Darren's, you know, went in form, one of the best at. Nicely done. Straight over and back out. And about to win his sixth game in a row. At the expense of his opponent's errors and missed shots, missed opportunities. <laughs> I just have to chuckle. There's a, someone, a gentleman sitting on the sidelines here asking, uh, one of the guys, if he can see the score across the room, and it's easily visible to all of us. He says, I can't. <laughs> Glasses. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a lot to a little right mm -hmm. now after seven games. And this is uh, a tough place. Uh, Ferry, Robert Ferry, somewhat like Kobayashi in the last match, has made a mistake and then kind of got punished a little bit. He's Excessively, punished, you might call he's it. He's made he's made a few because he he, uh, yeah. he scratched on the break. He uh, missed a he couple got of shots. He kissed in on the break too, got, though. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, then he uh, he missed a couple of what I would call s simple shots. Yeah, the eight well, ball. He missed the eight. Uh, yeah. Due to air, due to nerves or uh, just whatever reason, they were makeable shots that he he didn't uh, close on. So, and the score has you know gotten away from him. Okay, this would be a nice shot if you can see enough of the one to try and long rail bank it and hold the cue ball for the two, cross it over. It's a it's a pretty kind of a pretty shot, mm -hmm. cool shot. This is a nice one pocket shot here. Yeah, I like you this just one. Call, yeah, the, you like this one of my favorite banks. He's looking at kicking it. Oh, and I don't think he can get deep enough for the side, but maybe. And maybe that, so that tells me you can't see enough of the one to to even just bank it back mm -hmm. and play safe behind the five and eight. That was a two-way. Apparently, he knew the yeah. two would stop. Two-way, knowing that making it was probably mm -hmm. one out of ten or fifteen, just the way it laid. But the safety was high percent. Oh yeah, good speed and good confidence on a solid hit on the one. Now, Mr. Ferry going to the jump cue. Can't blame him. No, and oh, the one rail bank is good too. The one rail kick, excuse me. Oh yeah, and if he hits. Probably have enough dig on this to dodge the scratch if he makes it. Probably. It's going to be close, the scratch on the side. Wow, great shot. Oh. Well, he might have missed a couple of easy ones, but that just erased them all. Yeah, that was a nice He's one. feeling good here. How do you like laying that cue ball up against the 8-5 from there? Yeah, just a, probably a slow speed, mm -hmm. I guess. 
You don't care where the, where the two ball goes, really, as long as you get the ball, the cue ball there. Yeah, the two should be around the four, something like that. Oh, he's gonna, oh. he's gonna, le it's gonna leak away. Oh, field goal. Ouch! Uh, that's the one place he didn't want to go, and it was the one place that was hard to go to. Yeah, if he gets a bump on either, either ball, one. he's yeah. most likely okay and in a good position, but. Great shot there. Mm -hmm. Now, see, I can almost guarantee that if Robert had that shot, he would have been playing shape for the 310 combo. And Darren, of course, uh, feels like he can run out, so he'll go for the for the run out. Okay, gaining plenty of angle here to come across for the five. And that's the thing when you play above the balls. Once you get that angle, it does, unless the speed is really off, uh, you're you can handle mm -hmm. another five, six inches no matter how it falls. Makes it easy to play pool from above the ball. And of course, off the rail with the cue ball. Now he's got a lot of work left though. You can see the seven down here near the nine. Not a lot of choices on the six either. A little more, a little straight in there to get to the seven. You may have to go forward two rails yeah. here. Top inside English. I'd like to be able to just draw it. He's got just a little bit of an angle, doesn't he? Yeah, and it's the one that's drawing it. He may be going towards the side. Mm -hmm. And I think the seven is pretty tight going by the nine. So not saying it doesn't go, but there's plenty of places you're not so in love with shooting it from. Um, being on the rail is one of them. So if it goes with top inside, that really offers falling on the rail a lot of times. That top inside English does. So that's a bit of a worry. You'd love to be able to get to the short side of the seven, but I don't think that's possible. And he tried to anyways. That's how awkward it was trying yeah. to come to what was you might call the obvious side. That was a lot of power on that follow shot, though. He, uh, he stroked that very well and went right through it. And tried to create a different angle that was natural uh, just so he could get to the other side of the seven. And ironically, or... I'm not sure if I... Got, got short of it. Mentioned this, but I believe Darren Appleton is sponsored by Predator. Oh, he is. He made that, I believe. No. He did call the 10 in the corner. Are you going for the 10 here? Yeah, and I'm cutting the yep. 7 because yeah. you can hit up the rail. You can hit it really clean. You can overcut the 7 and catch a bunch of the 10 different mm -hmm. ways. You can double kiss the 10 in. I mean, you can make it with the cue ball. You can yeah. do it. That's the same kind of deal, really. But well, I think it's a little easier cutting mm -hmm. it, right? And if you like the bank, there's nothing wrong with that either. Uh, Cross side and then play the... 810? I actually like the, the, the billiard. The billiard, okay. Yeah, yeah just kind of just shove kind it, of off, shove the it ball. off the ball. Mm -hmm. Send it straight down. Maybe hit right about the first diamond from the top. Well, another one that you have a lot of ways to hit it. Yeah. A he did what you just said, right? Down the rail. Yeah. And Nicely he, done, and he. Uh, very nice. He uh, come up with a win. Closes the gap a little bit. Much nicer to be 6 to 2 than 7 to 1. Game number nine, about to be broken up by Darren Appleton. This is the first day of the U.S. Open 10 ball championships. We're at Griff's Billiards in Las Vegas on Decatur and Twain. Come on down, watch the pros, especially get down here on, what is it, on Friday? On Thursday, today's Thursday, get down here Saturday night for the finals. Or all day Saturday, for that matter. Right. Going to be a lot of big matches. Uh, all mm -hmm. big matches. The field so so, so strong. strong yeah. You could see the, or you would call the potential final any at any moment. We have 23 players with Fargo ratings over 800 out of 36. That's that's pretty strong. That's a couple of just huge fields. 
I mean, last week at the Predator World 10 Ball, we had 13 world champion titles. And a tough one here. You can see the three and the four nine. A lot of balls jumbled up. Oh, and a miss on the oh one. Oh boy. Oh boy, four balls a little. Did that go by the. Oh well, it's the three. The three. three you'd ball. have to play a three nine combo most likely. Mm -hmm. Is that what he just pointed out? Yeah, and if you don't, you get to mm -hmm. where you don't like it. You have a lot of safety options. Sure. Got decent, but if he has to cut the yeah. three back, and now, now you're talking about maybe playing safe. Yeah, I think you'd rather be over to the left a little, so yeah, you can no. hold the cue ball on the, the top part of the table instead of underneath those balls. Is he trying to get into the bottom of the six with the cue ball? Then the three kind of holds the four there. Is that right? Yes. And okay. The, and that ball dropped. Now he can open those or just play position, really. You can come to the short side on the five. You don't have to open these. You're going to be close enough to the four. You can cheat it, right? So you just come up to the, yeah, you just come up to the short side on the five, and the six is next. Really want to... One of the all-time best with the cue ball in short positions, and um, you know that eight ball really reflects it. Just moving the cue ball, little mm -hmm. little tiny movements here and there. It's so all important in eight ball, whereas it's not so important in nine ball or ten ball. The rotation pool. Right, but normally when you're good at that, your thought process is pretty good overall. So it kind of usually leans towards those players that are good decision makers. Yeah, you got a little flat here. He's got to come all the way down for the seven. And, yeah, and he's on uh, the wrong side He's of on it. the wrong side of it, yeah, exactly. Which is kind of no side of it is the problem. Oh, he's gone three rails. Yeah, yeah. kind of hooked on him. Uh, will he just bank at it or hold the cue ball behind the ten? I kind of think in a real threatening, you know, Darren realizes he's a pretty big favorite here. But in a big situation, I think he would chip the seven uh, towards the rail towards the ten and run the cue ball two rails trying to use the eight is what oh, I okay. think he would do. Okay. Um, and maybe not. Maybe it's a little too steep for that. No. Uh, well, it's going to be hard to get the seven by the by oh, the ten. That but great. He hit that pretty darn good. So he was he was going for it all the way. Played the cue ball pretty nice. Probably just bring it straight back. He went to the corner with it, mm -hmm. which I kind of like better than drawing it straight back. Yeah, with well those, those side, side pockets, pockets are yeah, tough. You don't have to hit it. And uh, got a win off of that. Takes the 7-2 to two lead. This is a race to nine. Keep in mind, it's double elimination. The finals is a single race to 11. That will be Saturday night. Evening, excuse me. We are on Pacific time. If you're going to be changing time zones, make sure you check and stay with us. Take your iPad with you. Take your computer with you if you're traveling. But join us right here on PlaySCSIPool.com. If you want to see the brackets, they're on CTS On Demand. And the live scoring is also there. Just look for the little uh, link that's right underneath the title of the world of the U.S. Open 10 ball. Robert Ferry from Fairless Hills, Pennsylvania. I wonder if that's more the center of the state, I'm thinking. I don't know, but uh, Happy Valley? I think Darren is, uh, what, Allentown? He previously, previously lived there. Lived there? Yeah. Is Back in the around? U.K. now. Okay, oh, is he? Yeah. Okay, another one that Darren used to just be one of the best, just getting down and knocking this in and coming straight down the table. He can use outside as well, but really I think straight down the table, just a hair of inside. Okay, I think that's really the best play. That's a, I overcut, overcut it. it. It's going to play safe for him, though. Uh, I don't know. 
Well, it's close. Yeah, I think you're right. I think the three just barely has him. And like right there, for instance, if you notice his cueing, uh, like his pre-shot and everything looked lo a little bit like he was trying to get a feel for the shot mm -hmm. more than more knowing what's going to happen a little bit. That's uh, a good description. Saw, That's a, uh, I, I it was did. a little I, different. I saw a little than, hesitation. Yeah, kind of it was like, oh, I'm getting a rhythm. Not as deliberate. Not Let as me get a feel for this inside yeah. I'm putting on here rather than a little bit more of uh, knowing what was happening. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's just a bit of the, that rust as well maybe. Well, this young man here needs a little bit more than rust. To uh, yeah, Darren's to played pretty well yeah. overall. A couple mistakes uh, with the cue ball, and, but really played played pretty pretty clean. Ouch. Okay. He won't do much here. I don't think he'll really dig too much. Just kind of take the shot on the two from about where the one's at. And that's a confidence builder. People mm -hmm. would think the opposite. Oh, let me draw this ball back. That's the confidence uh, builder. And I don't think so. I, I think working through the, the rack is the is the way to really gain confidence. I agree. I, I just <laughs> I was about to say the follow shot is what I would consider but he was too straight on it because that ball when you follow yeah. it you almost invariably you catch the top corner of the pocket on the top rail you catch the corner of the pocket and it, it stops it doesn't you and plus you got to put it so much to get all the way back down yeah and it just seems like to me that how often is darren appleton going to miss the two ball from just a little bit above that right side pocket there especially with the three so available or if he's in the center of the pocket uh, like if, he, if he's almost in line with it just off to the right of the nine what about the, 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 the 10 ball off oh, the deuce right, with right, the cue ball? Right. It's just off the rail where it makes it a big ball to, to pocket. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's the he may have left another 10 ball. He did. He left it for sure. This is a replay of the first game. Except he had ball in hand the first game. Robert did. This one sits really nice, so another one mm -hmm. that key here is just don't baby it, baby it. Now you don't want to blast it, of course, but give it a chance to slide up that rail a little bit, the 10, just in case it didn't hit perfectly. And then if it is missed, give it a chance to move out of the middle of the pocket, but it's not going to go anywhere. It's going right in. And big game for uh, Robert Ferry. If you're in, if you're in um, Fairless Hills, Pennsylvania, he does a lot of landscaping and removes trees for a living, so give him a call. Lost his first match here at the, this is the 10 a.m. this morning. Things got started. We didn't start streaming for you guys at home till uh, noon because uh, we don't get out of bed before 10. Just uh, try to be fresh for you guys for the 6 p.m. match. So we'll start a little later. Darren's breaking the balls. Okay, hit those pretty well. Trying to get on the hill here. Two ball, doesn't need to. The nine ball's coming down, it's not going to get there. He made oh, a ball look at though. it come back in. He made a ball, though. Something Did squeaked it? in. It was the uh, seven, I believe. Funny how the nap of the cloth can sometimes do that. The ball looked like it rolled, but it didn't really roll. It just a uh, little, probably a little bit of dirt on the cloth or something on it. I think it has that tendency a little more when it's new as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little thicker yeah, or something. The ball comes down like a knuckleball, just kind of moving around right. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, the nap's thicker. Well, there's no nap on this cloth because it's the worsted uh, wool, whatever. Well, things are laying pretty good here for Darren Appleton. It's a choice again if he wants to dig on this and come two rails inside the eight or really good with the with the bridge. So he could have hit top inside or uh, now, now he'll go top inside, just creep out to the center of the table, take the angle on the five to come back across for the six that's uh, up near the four now. 
See, and that's the, what I'm talking about as far as creeping. You know, mm -hmm. he tr really trusts it rolling out there, and really a foot from there, he was fine. And then you just get better and better as it goes. Got pretty straight. I, um, I guess he can just go ahead and play the 8-9 combo, and if they both fall, he'll be there for the 10 ball too. Yeah, just stay nice and mm -hmm. heavy on it. You'll just roll forward a little bit. Just make sure you don't cut the 9 too much. Yeah, you don't want to cut it hardly at all, really, but the only way you could lose the 8 is if you cut the 8 into the right. 9, uh, into the rail and into the mm -hmm. 9 a lot. So, And that puts him on the hill. So they exchanged a couple of racks there. But Darren, Darren got his job done when he made six games in a row after losing the first one. Yeah, you figure it's eight to three, and a Mr. Ferry hasn't hasn't played his best. Of course, not the highest-rated player in the tournament, but still, you would have figured a little bit um, more success at times. Mm -hmm. Well, he had the opportunity to be more successful. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of shots, and you have to, you know, I for one, whenever I get into these things, because I don't have the experience you do, Jeremy, in tournaments like this, is my nerves get to me a little bit, and I'll miss it. I'll make a couple of mistakes due to nerves. And sometimes they'll actually work me through a rack where I might not get through with it because of the nerves. You know, sometimes that intensity helps you focus a little more. Absolutely. And sometimes it, uh, it takes away. Your arm locks up a little bit. Well, there's, so. uh, you know, it's kind of like this. You said it, kind of nailed it. For you, you were in a little bit of unfamiliar territory so mm -hmm. that's a different nerve mm -hmm. okay and then the there's other nerves that I always call them prepared nerves and unprepared nerves meaning if you're one of these players at this level that it's not so unfamiliar if you've been training if you've been doing the right things getting yourself ready for an event well that's when that intensity takes over and those good nerves really mm -hmm. do amazing things for you at times yeah. but if you've been lazy and you're you're not prepared, your game's off, or you're questioning your game, even though you've been trying to prepare, there's a flaw there of some sort. Well, now those nerves can be... Uh, detrimental. Exactly, yeah. and very detrimental. And in a case like, like with Robert here, uh, you know, he works for a living, doesn't play pool a lot. You know, he says he plays pool whenever he has a chance. So it, uh, uh, that, that's part of the difference, difference between a regional player or a strong, uh, uh, working player and right. a professional player. And he's, you know, it's a U.S. Open, so he's taking advantage yeah. of it, trying to get some experience, and I'm sure enjoy himself while competing with uh, the best in the world. Falling a little straight here on the three, He's doing though. that right now. Yeah. You know, Darren definitely has shown to be, well, Hall of Famer, one of the best in the world. Yeah, Dynamite Darren, that, that may just be a uh, nickname just because of the, the biggest moments he's he's shined throughout his career. Not won a ton of titles, period, but the big ones and, mm -hmm. uh, and the biggest moments in, in our sport. Um, he can attach his name to many of those. Uh, it's pretty uh, something special. And, and I'm glad to see he's uh, back trying to also. Uh, get back in form to where he was at, at one time. Because he's only, we talked about Alex Pagaline. Uh, Darren just 42 or 43. 43. Stays in pretty good shape himself, so. Well, Darren used to box, I believe. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's going to wrap this around the six, float it around. Th oh, he overcut it. Okay. Played it with inside and tried to play a delicate one rail shape position, which is a tough shot from that much distance. You like trying to mass it around that five ball? Catch probably. Rail first, probably. probably catch yeah. Or kick. The kick isn't that bad to that side rail either. Um, Meaning kick into the rail he's mm -hmm. closest mm -hmm. to and, and kind of come on the same line as the Massey. Uh, uh, to the left of the five right. and, five and, so and catch seven. And catch the bottom rail right, and do something right. with that. Or even draw it with the Massey on the mm -hmm. kick, like a little bit of low left and draw into that. Um, he could jump it and two rail kick at it. That's what I think he's and maybe that's what getting he's at. Doing. Well, no, he's, is he going straight at it? We'll see. I think he might be going. Yeah, he can see it. Remember, they cut a little easier when they're hopping. 
Yeah, that's got to hit the six for anything good to happen here. It, it didn't. didn't. And he's left Darren um, enough to make short work of the rest of the match. And Darren's just got to pay attention to this first shot getting on the five, so he'll draw this ball, not wanting to flirt getting behind the seven. So a little low inside maybe here, wrapping the cue ball. Three rails in between the ten and seven. That one's got to slow down a piece. Put some juice on that. Still okay. Let's go back and forth two rails. And I don't think I would come back for the side here. I don't really see it being necessary. Mm -hmm. I'd stay above the seven. There's not really a bad place. Now, of course, they're on the rail or super thin. But you should judge the speed whether you want to go two rails and out or, or get to that third rail also. Now he's kind of looking at me. Yeah, now he's hitting more middle, so that means he's coming back for the side. Oh, he just just barely beat <laughs> nailing that nine ball. If he does that, he's going to have a sharp cut on the, on the seven. Yeah, if he cuts it super thin, yeah. it may come back on the nine. It yeah. may hit it thin yeah. and can carry the nine right with the cue ball, but nevertheless. Uh, Darren needs these two balls to move on in, on the one loss side and send Mr. Ferry. Back to Fairless oh, that Hills, didn't get there, did it? Pennsylvania. Did that get there? Well, if it didn't, he's, yeah, it got there. He'll cut it. Yeah, but it wasn't by much. So, but Dynamite Darren Appleton's going to advance, and we'll this see might, more of him. Uh, Nine three win. Darren Appleton moves on. Robert Ferry had the pleasure of playing in the U.S. Open. Jeremy Jones and George Thea signing off. Thanks, guys. We'll be back at six.